Hello and welcome to The Foul Line. We are here, season four, episode three. We got a great panel of guests for you guys today, uh, talking about week three over in Sebago and Kennebec. You know me, uh, commissioner of the Maine Basketball League, Nick Reese Hunter. I'm going to kick it over to Tristan. Yeah, you guys basically know me at this point, uh, broadcast host for Kennebec. Y'all saw me in Sebago um, this past week, and I'll be looking to get down there as much as possible for the rest of the season. Awesome. Uh, representing the Sebago side, we got a couple guys. Deontay started off. How y'all doing today? Glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. Absolutely. Ryan? Ryan Martin, thanks for the invite. Happy to be here, too. Absolutely. And over on the Kennebec side, we have Mitch. I've been around. Yeah. So, again, uh, like, like the other guy said, appreciate you having me on, Nick. Tristan, should be a fun time. Most definitely, sure. guys. Most definitely. Thanks for being here. We got a couple awesome faces. I know Ryan, we set it off camera a little bit. Uh, been super elusive. Great to get you on the podcast, Mitch. We did an exclusive in the past. Deontay, we did an exclusive in the past. So it's great to have you guys back. Me and Tristan are here every week. As you guys know, you can find us on YouTube at Maine Basketball League. Uh, Tristan, would you uh, kindly start us off with our friends over at Devon's Property Maintenance? So the MBL, once again, is brought to you in part by Devon's Property Maintenance. Uh, taking care of your property through every season, Devon's Property Maintenance will keep your yard looking tip-top with their range of services, including plowing, mowing, shrub removal, and many more depending on the time of year. Visit devonspropertymaintenance.com or give the man himself a call at 207-660-2811 for your free estimate. Awesome. And we thank Devin so much for his sponsorship. And then we also got Top Notch Cannabis uh, centralized in the central main area. They're all about medicinal cannabis delivery. Um, and there's some big news coming up with them. I can't really share anything or talk about it yet. All I can say is that there's some big news coming up. Hopefully we'll be able to share it soon. You can find out more about what they do and maybe place an order at topnotchcannabis207.com. And Tristan, tell us about Miller Fitness. Absolutely. Uh, no surprise, Miller Fitness, once again, a sponsorship of the NBL. Uh, with their locations in Augusta, Fairfield, Farmington, Newport, Skowhegan, and Wells, joining the Miller Fitness family has never been more accessible to Mainers. Start your health and wellness journey today by visiting MillerFitness.com to learn more about personal training and memberships. Thanks, Curtis Miller, for the sponsorship. Uh, it's a repeat, repeat offender on the podcast at this point. Before we get started here on the Sebago side, we had the Rockets uh, traveling. Uh, they actually split the day one and one. Mitch, I actually have a question for you. What do you think about uh, the way Withy assembled this Rockets team? It's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of very interesting, hard nosed talents on that Rockets team. We got like guys like Kobe Robertson, Jet Boyer, yep. Andrew Foster, Van Braz, Jacob Marcou. What are your thoughts on that roster? Well, definitely a definitely a withy team, right? He's methodical when he drafts. He picks guys who are going to follow his lead, uh, but are also going to play really hard nose basketball. You know, withy is one of those guys who, um, you know, maybe gets away with a foul or two here and there, but he plays hard. Uh, you cannot question his heart, and I think most of his guys would probably follow him to the ends of the earth. So, you know, what you have is a squad that. You know, so what they lost that second game. I think what you're looking at is if they had to take that match up another two or three times, they'd do it in a heartbeat, and I bet they'd be tough to beat. For sure. And luckily enough for the Rockets in this one, finally, Kobe Robertson came out with a really strong game. 19 points for him, 6 for 11 from the field, including 5 for 7 from deep. Pair that with three rebounds, five assists, one steal, and just a single turnover. Finally, a big game from him after a really kind of troubled start in the early goings this season. Uh, also, I'll, I'd like to sing the praises of Jacob Marcou. His continued success this season is, I've never seen a growth like this, I don't think. He's almost like a top-tier player nowadays in this league, it seems. And I don't remember him being as good as he is now. In this one, he got a double-double, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, Tristan, Talk to me about Jacob Marcou and what you've obser observed from him this season so far. Yeah, absolutely. I actually noticed that even before the season started, I've been playing, I've been getting some runs in in Pittsfield, playing some pickup ball there on Mondays and Thursdays. And um, Marcou's been there and obviously it's pickup. So you guys are, you play more free and you just try some stuff. And Marcou started pulling up from deep and he was just hitting everything. So I'm like, man, I'm curious to see what Jake does in the men's league this season. And then you start out with week one, he had like 26 points or something like that. And just absolutely carried that team 
when Justin Martin was out. Um, and, you know, his second week kind of dipped a little bit, but the back to back that he played, he played extremely well points and boards. He's um, he's he's been proving a lot. And it's fun. To, it's fun to watch Mark do at this point. I think he's a top tier big in the league. Yeah, I love the way he shoots the ball uh, like in that inside. It's like green every time inside the, baby the arc. Hook. He's got that baby yeah. hook down. Yeah, for sure. Sure. I love it. I love it. Um, on the other side. Uh, really struggling this season to get uh, numbers in the win column. We have the Bucks in this one. Uh, Tristan Cheney put up just ten. Uh, Kobe Cheney put up ten, and then Dan Thomas put up thirteen. Other than that, nobody else scored more than five on this Bucks team. Um, in this one, it was a really tough, really tough goings for them. Uh, they're zero and three this season. Definitely one of those hungry teams I could see making a mid to late season climb if they get their shit straight. Uh, so to speak, but uh, they definitely struggled here. Pistons versus Rockets. In this one, it was the second of the Rockets doubleheader. Uh, Deontay, you played in this game. This one was, it looks like it was a 14-point victory here. Um, and this one, this I would say this was your coming out game this season as well. 24 points, four rebounds, three assists, two steals, one turnover. Uh, you've had a lot of success on this Pistons team so far. What do you have to say about your teammates? Uh, you know, the grasses, Stilly, uh, the Lang goddesses. Uh, I love playing with them. Uh, honestly, it's giving me a little bit more freedom. I, I get to play off the ball a little bit more, so y'all get to see a different side of that. So that's a plus. Uh, we get out and run. That's a good thing. Like, we also play defense very well. We communicate well. I love that about us. Leah, the grasses, Liam, Aiden, I love them. I love hooping with them. They they know where – they have a knack to where to know where to be. They make the right pass. They know how to play basketball. Alex, Derek, the same way. Like, it's just – I just love it, honestly. I, I, I also love to watch you guys play. There's so many options on this team – uh, and Alex, uh, he's just going to grow more more comfortable in the middle of it, that crazy rebounder, flashy passer uh, type of basketball player. But in this one, you were the head honcho, I would say, that 7 for 12 from the field, 3 for 7 from deep, 43% shooting from three-point range, real solid. But then my, my favorite thing that I'm looking at is that 7 for 7 from the stripe, uh, very Ryan Martin-esque, if you will. Um, yes, still, Stillman Mayhan, 12 points, 5 rebounds, 3 steals as well. Uh, really scary defensive backcourt. What's it like Ding up some of these guards when you know you got Stillman by your side? Uh, it makes me play a little bit more aggressive knowing that I have that help and having someone I didn't I'm not gonna say that I didn't have that last season, but being able to be a little bit more aggressive knowing that still he can get those over the top passes or those skip passes or whatever the case may be. It's a lot it, it's free. It's being able to channel my inner me, honestly. Definitely. It's, it's bringing out the best in you so far. Last thing, Deontay, I got to ask, just because we got you here, we're talking about the Pistons, man. Uh, your jersey looks a little different this season. There's a little something extra that you got that that little symbol. It's the A on your jersey. When you saw that week one, when you put the jersey on, I'm just wondering, what did, what did that mean to you as a player, sort of how, how you've come into your own in this league and developed? Uh, honestly, it kind of felt a little surreal because – uh, Alex told me that it was something new that you were trying out, and I felt I felt honored, honestly, because for him to trust me to to be that assistant captain or whatever, it it, it meant a lot to me, honestly. Like it just it, it's touching for real, for real. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad to hear that. I thought it was a great selection on Alex's part, and like I said last week. Mitch, you were one captain who also named an assistant on your team. Captains did not have to do that. They elected to do it. Uh, and so it's definitely something uh, special that you can behold. Uh, and it looks pretty sick on that jersey, if I do say myself. Uh, I do, though. M moving past that game, uh, we had Nuggets and Bulls here, the first of the Nuggets duo of games. Um, Ryan, this was this was your one of your first experiences in the at least main basketball league, seeing uh, one of our old generation superstars, Jordan DeRoseby. What were your first impressions like within the scope of this league, just watching DeRoseby play? Yeah, um, Jordan can score many different ways, but I was most impressed with Jordan by how good of a teammate he is. Um, he seemed to get everyone involved. He didn't really force too much. Um, guys made mistakes. He, 
giving high fives, had their back. He just seems like a guy who's played a lot of basketball. He knows how to win. He's a leader. Um, yeah, I, think I was very, very impressed with Jordan. In this one, Jordan DeRosby, 29 points, uh, nine rebounds, three assists, one steal. He did have five turnovers and was nine for 25 from the field and two for seven from three. The ball really is going through his hands every single play. Uh, he had a little bit of help chipped in from Eric Sobey, 12 points, seven rebounds. Tyler Harvey as well, four points, seven rebounds, five assists. Ryan, you've competed now against Tyler Harvey for a couple of seasons. What's it like when you match up against against Quag? What's the uh, feeling you get? He's chippy, man. Yeah, he, I mean, and he knows it too. Yeah. Uh, every every time I played against him, I've obviously gotten hurt. Uh, but he, uh, yeah, he's very aggressive. He's physical. I think he's just a competitor and wants to win. I don't think he's out there trying to hurt people. Um, but that's what makes his teams usually good, is he can take other teams out of their comfort zone and take away other teams' best guards. Um, he's a good physical defender. And he makes other teams uncomfortable. Straight up, straight up. He he is an absolute dog. Um, real chippy player, but it it definitely has led to some success in this league. He's won, I believe, at least two. I believe he's won three championships in this league. Um, so he's had some success uh, in in the long haul. Uh, definitely real gritty. On the other side for the Bulls, Josh Gormley. 13 points, eight rebounds, three assists, three steals. Uh, Zach Blodgett, 13 points, five rebounds. Um, first loss of the season for the Bulls in this one. I was I was surprised, but not so much because the Nuggets have really been playing through that superstar that they got, and it's been paying dividends for them so far. Um, let's move on and talk about the second one. Um, the second game for the Nuggets here was against the Heat. Now the Heat had a lot of momentum. Uh, Tristan, this was your first time after after hearing me say the words that I said about the Heat after the Week One podcast or during the Week One podcast, uh, where I predicted that they would win two games or less in the season. When you first <laughs> saw them play, what were your initial thoughts? Um, so I was actually I found myself rooting for the Heat in this game as like I love an <laughs> underdog, dude. I really do, yep. and um. To, to hear what you had said about them kind of set the, set the tone in my head of like, okay, they are an underdog. And I watched them play, and they've got a lot of talent. It's a lot of raw talent, um, and it's a lot of uh, – how do I say this politely? Um, they don't – exa- <laughs> they're not super cohesive. They don't work well together to the best of what I think they could. I think they're trying to find their chemistry still. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Will Clemmer is a perfect captain to try and help them figure that out. Um, and I think you started to see it in this game where like they were winning at halftime and they were doing it by suffocating defense and they were keeping the score low. Uh, obviously it's also the second game of a back-to-back for the other team. So, you know, keep that into consideration, but I don't know, man, I think, I think they're going to win more than two games this season. I think they're starting to figure it out. I think they have some talent. And if you can start to control that and get it moving in the right direction, I think they will be, they'll sneak in bottom playoffs maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd love to see it. I honestly would. Uh, and I think it's going to be really contingent on that top guy on their team, Mr. Ryan Gorman, absolute shooter. 24 points in this one, 8 for 16 from the field, 6 for 12 from 3, that's 50%. Uh, five rebounds, two assists, one steal. He had four turnovers as well. It was tough for him in this one. The Nuggets, they didn't seem tired. They have so much defense with Charles Beal, Tyler Harvey. Uh, you know, all these guys that they can throw at you. Um, and they, they ended up taking this game, the Nuggets, uh, 67, 56, giving the Heat another loss. Um, but I was honestly, I was honestly pleased with what I observed uh, from the Heat in this one. I'm loving the improvement that I see, or maybe not improvement is the right word, but the efforts that I see from Nazari Henderson on the defensive side of the ball, working his tail off. He's super athletic. Um uh, Nick Houghton, holy cow, shortest guy in the gym. He put up 15 points, two rebounds, two assists, one steal. Tristan, what did you think about Nick Houghton when you first saw him? Uh, his his last name was hard to pronounce the correct way. At first, <laughs> I struggled with that a lot, so I apologize for that. Um, hey, he's fast, and he can shoot. Yeah. Um, obviously, no, no surprise, he's undersized. But um, I think the way that he plays makes up for that very well. Um, I, I see him having a very big role in their scoring. Um, 
obviously you gotta you kind of have to work harder to get him open that way he's not shooting over dudes who are a lot taller than him but if you can get him open looks i think he's gonna knock it down definitely definitely he is he is a deadly shooter man he can be i've seen him hit a bunch uh and he's one of those smaller guys you love to root for um and he's he's just a super nice kid uh when he first came onto the scene he, he exhibited a ton of talent uh and, and just uh He's a nice guy. I root for him always. Underdog type of player. That Heat team, that's sort of their identity. Like like you said, absolute underdogs. Uh, in the next game, we had Raptors, Hornets. This was actually the battle of the unbeatens. Surprisingly enough, you look at both of these teams on paper, I feel like neither of them should have been un, uh, not unbeatens, excuse me, uh, the Owen whatevers. They haven't won a game yet, uh, which is surprising. You know, Captain Marcus DeVoe, a uh, couple of successful seasons on a couple of different teams. Elijah Walker uh, played in a championship game in his division division with LB Murphy and a couple of guys uh, just recently. So uh, they're competing for a win in this one. It ended up being the Raptors that would take it 60 to 50. Chris Gillikin, 13 points, two rebounds, one steal. He was the leading scorer for the Raptors in this one. Marcus DeVoe, uh, you know, taking the lead as he does, 12 points, seven rebounds in the hard-fought win. And then this Dylan Weiser dude, uh, rookie in the NBL, 10 points, five rebounds as well. Uh, overall, still Jacob Stone hasn't scored over 10 points um, in a game this season. He's a great player who we've seen underperform. Ryan, you actually coached him. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, yep. W- what is he capable of? Tell us what Stone is capable of. Yeah, Jake, first of all, just loves basketball. Um, yeah. He's a guy who can stretch the floor. You know, he's athletic. He can guard multiple positions. Um, but, yeah, when he's shooting the ball well, he's really tough to guard because he's, he's good at going to the basket, too. He finishes well around the rim. And he's really just so smooth, too. Like, the first time I saw him play when he was a sophomore in high school, I just remember just how smooth he looked playing basketball. He just has a basketball body, and I mean, he has a ton of potential, too. And he loves the game, so I think he's he's someone that he's going to start playing better. I don't I don't see Jake struggling for too much longer. No, I don't think so either. He showed up really early last week, and he he wants to be better, so he's going to be, I think, real soon. Uh, yeah. We haven't seen the best of him this season by a long shot. I don't think. Um, side note: Matt Stenger in just a couple minutes kicking in six points for the Raptors. Absolutely love it. Low key guy uh have to always mention that on the other side for the hornets isaiah hill 15 points on a pretty shabby four for 14 from the field and three for 12 from three only shooting 25 percent from three he's been putting up good points uh on a lot of volume this season um still hasn't panned out to wins for the hornets he's really their top guy he's taken you know sort of carved out that role for himself um i'd like to see austin mitson play a little bit more i think I, i like the way he plays um really chippy type three and d player who can put points on the board if you you know put the ball in his hands um but yeah that was what we had for the sebago division guys uh raptors taking that one getting their first victory of the season uh 60 51 excuse me 60 50 over the hornets Clippers, Jazz, we had the Kennebec versus Kennebec. Other than that, we had the Knicks traveling and we had the Nets traveling this one, including Mr. Ryan Martin. Let's first talk about Clippers, Jazz. This one was a crazy game. Uh, Tristan, overall thoughts on this game. You know, this one was a banger. Great way to start it. It it was. It was an amazing way to start um, the second half of my back-to-back of doing five games Sunday night, five games Monday. I came in. A little tired. I was like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. And this game just got got the blood pumping immediately. I think I said to to Berard after it. I said, if that doesn't get you ready for the rest of these games, I don't know what does. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a back and forth game, and it was it was the perfect perfect way to start off the evening. Yeah, it it was it was a great one. As we've said, um, eventually it was a Clippers victory by two, their first win of the season. Uh, Devin Began, his first win as a captain. And I think I mentioned this last week, just putting a little bit more shine on it uh, before we get into the box score here. But Devin Began recently just broke into the top 10 threes all time leaderboard. So that was pretty cool um, for him, for me to see that as well. But on his team, Brad Smith with a really awesome, emphatic 14 points, 10 rebounds. Mitch, 
you were brokenhearted to not be able to draft Brad this season. Watching him or at least observing him get a double-double and a win for his team, what does that mean to you? Well, I'm going to touch just a little uh, preview. I'm going to touch more on this on my hot take, but uh, I'll save that for later. Uh, okay. Yeah, not 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 getting Brad uh, really, really sucked for me uh, for all sorts of reasons. I coached Brad when he was in high school, um, so I, I've watched his game develop over a lot of years. Um, he's had some success in the NBL, but what I'll what I'll share with people is he has put in a ton of work since last season. He's uh, he's with a handful of us in Auburn. He's playing in the Augusta League with us. He's gotten in better shape, much more confident player. So as soon as uh, Devin decided to pick him up, uh, that, that that early pick in the second round, I was like, huh, that's 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 a great pickup if they utilize him right. Yeah. Um, Brad Brad is a certified baller, so um, it wasn't surprising to see him. You know, take over how he did in certain parts of the game. I think he still has more in the tank. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Mitch. And that's a great perspective for those who don't know. Mitch has drafted him several seasons in a row now. Uh, yeah. Have you have you guys won gold together? In, in no, nope, not yet. Um, you know, we've we've had some successful seasons, but um, unfortunately, we weren't we weren't able to get that chip together yet. But uh, you know, maybe next season. Mm-hmm. Hey. Two more days until that trade deadline, Mitch. Who knows, right? I trust me, I've already barked up that tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. I love to see you guys play together. Uh, it's a chemistry unlike a lot of different types of players in this season. Um, I'm, I'm sure you guys will get another shot at it. Um, and sure. this one, um, it, it was a pretty low-scoring affair. Um Overall, on the Clippers, they balanced their game really well. Jordan Holmes had nine. <laughs> Payson Washburn had nine. Devin only had six points. Heath started just three. Nate Martin with 10. Um, it's kind of crazy how this math adds up because there's three guys with uh, 12 points or more on the other team, um, but they still didn't manage the victory. I guess they were just a little bit top heavy on the Jazz. Andrew Middleton continues to really have a great season overall or as an individual. 18 points, 14 rebounds, three steals, two blocks, one assist, three turnovers. Tristan. Talk to me about Andrew, man, this climb that we've seen from him as an individual player, I think, so far. Oh, man, Andrew's the homie. Andrew's awesome. He's <laughs> such a good person, and he, it, he's, he's, a per, he's a person you want to root for and a person you want to see succeed. Um, and obviously, we all know he's he's talented on the basketball court as well. I think mm -hmm. he's looking for his shot more, and he's confident, and he's attacking more. Like, the majority of his points are coming in the first 10 minutes of the game. Like, he starts super hot, and he'll score quickly. And he's just he's looking for his shot. Um, and it's really nice to see Drew trying to be aggressive and looking for looking to score. Um, I would challenge him a little bit and like to see the consistency in the shooting percentage continue throughout the game. Because if that happens, we're talking monster games, like 30, 40 point games, if he can stay hot throughout the entire game. Um, and I, I want to see it once this season. Andrew is is such a talented player. Mitch, you've played with him in this league before, I believe, at least once or twice. Yeah, I picked up Andrew on the, my last Heat team, and then you had to swap conferences on me, so I couldn't get the Heat again. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I actually, I got after Andrew like week week one. And I kind of like everybody's been telling him, man, like he's he's one of the most talented guys uh, in this entire league, and he a lot of times just kind of goes through the motions. Um, I think what we're starting to see is him just scratch the surface of, of his potential here. So I'm excited for, for him. I'm excited for the league because if Andrew's playing good basketball, it's just good for us. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's so well said. And he really, when you see him, when he's on, it's just entertainment, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. his shot, his stroke, he like, he'll occasionally get aggressive and go and throw down a jam or attempt to, yeah. and it's like, Whoa. Okay. Okay. It's Andrew. Yeah. Exactly. It is. It's different. Uh, it's the rare breed that we don't often see. One guy I got to speak speak about on the Jazz. He was originally going to join our panel tonight, couldn't make it. But Noah Caret, man, I think we we're seeing a Noah Caret leap this season, guys. Look at this this production from him on paper: thirteen points, seven rebounds, six assists. We mentioned it earlier off camera. Leading the league in assists by averages per game. Um, I think all around we're seeing a, a, the best version of Noah that we've ever seen maybe i I, th I think like just great basketball from noah and then also craig deroche uh legend in this league uh 12 points six turnovers for craig in his week one 
uh, debut coming off injury. So that'll definitely be uh, going down in the near future for him. He's just, you know, shaking off the rust a bit. But yeah, and this one, Clippers victory over the Jazz by two. This was a great way to start week one and come back. Next, we had a tough one. We had Knicks versus Kings. Mitch, man, overall thoughts. Overall thoughts. The the Knicks were tough in this one. Every shot was going in. Yeah. You know, what what I'm going to say, Nick, and this is is all props to them, man. They came in. They played hard. They they smacked us in the mouth from the tip. I think this is awesome for the league. Um, I think what you're seeing is uh, in seasons past, uh, right, the so the Sebago division trying to catch their legs a little bit. You know, it's still fairly new in terms of uh, adding that division to this league. If we got teams like the Knicks, you see the Pistons, see these guys starting to ball out and have some consistent basketball. Like that's good. Like that's parity across the league, and that's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we've got some things to work on as a team. I think we've shown some really great flashes. Um, you know, four point difference in that game too, when we could have been you know two wins into this game. Um, I I'll own what I got to own. This is, uh, historically the worst start to a season I've ever had statistically. Um, you know, last season, 55% from the field, 45% from three, and I'm averaging like 20% right now, like mm-hmm. from the field. So not great. Right. Um, so I got to own that. I got to be better. Uh, we also have to figure out how to maximize guys like, uh, you know, Garrett Clemmer, who in game two got three field goal, uh, makes right. Or attempts, yeah. um, you know, a lot of free throws, but still can't have that happen. Um, but that's kind of, that was the game script against the Knicks, even, you know, us struggling to get the shots we wanted and they were making everything. So big props to them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a, a ton of guys who are shot like bona fide shot makers on the, on the Kings. We're just not making shots. We're looking at Kobe Neto two for 10 from the field, uh, yeah. you know, 20% Garrett Clemmer, legendary shooter in this league, three for 13 from the field, 23%, uh, John Clegg, six for 15 and then Mitch just four for 10. Uh, you know, one of the better ones on his team, but still just overall struggle from, from the field, just 22 for thir- uh, 66, 33% from the field for the Kings. But uh, Clegg's put up 17 points, five rebounds. He's he's had a solid start to his season, tapered off a bit in week two, but a really strong start in week one. Um, Daniel Fortier, you know, continuing to be a, a mosquito. Um, and Garrett Clemmer, uh, I think, you know, 8.6 rebounds, zero turnovers, three steals, you know, serviceable in his own right, but definitely can't be shooting one for nine from three. That's really tough. Um, but again, it's all about just finding that fit, finding, uh, finding the strengths, everybody and really maximizing them. Um, and this one, just talking about the other side with the Knicks, Ryan Gormley, 24 points, two rebounds, one assist, five turnovers, three steals, man, he's really come onto the scene and carved a role in this league already mitch you you seem like you guys had a relationship i know he's a waterville guy do you know him from the past uh no but you know he and i he and i got a little chippy during the game which you know i, I love the competitive nature um at halftime we kind of you know made up and one one about our game but uh you know what i like about those guys they weren't backing down like they, they could have been up by 40 and they weren't backing down but no like yeah. ryan leads that team you know what I mean? Like he comes out with fire and, and he really pushes those guys forward. So um, no, I was really impressed with what I saw out of him. Definitely. Definitely. And then captain Ben Darling, rookie captain, Ben Darling, man, I love what I see from Ben low key up there in scoring and he's missed a game. Uh, people don't know he's played three games. The Knicks have played four and he's up there with the, with the other guys and scoring still 21 points, eight for 15 from the field, eight rebounds, five assists, Deontay, there are a few guys in this league that rival you, I think, in terms of speed and quickness. Ben's up there. What do you have to say about Ben and competing with him in, in, in the past couple of years in this league? Uh, so my first year playing against him, I actually kind of hated him because he <laughs> did match my, my speed and quickness. And that's something that I really wasn't used to and I kind of had to get used to. So that was a downer. But once I got to play with him, like, it, it's it's a beautiful thing, honestly. Like, it, it's really a thing of its own. If you really think about it and love basketball like we do, it's speed, having speed and quickness, but I, but actually util, utilizing it in the correct way is, is rare, and he does that. Absolutely. I mean, he, this is a guy we've seen literally bust his head open, uh, you know, trying to get a Back. loose ball in an NBL court 
with blood going everywhere like crazy put his life on the line for for main basketball league play and he's just that type of competitor he's he's that type of guy i love to see it obviously i don't love to see blood on the court but the competitiveness and the fire absolutely amazing he's one of the one of the best in terms of that uh sean smith also for the Knicks, 14 points eight rebounds and of course we got to talk about lb murphy's four points nine rebounds seven assists three steals and just one turnover he's everywhere right i mean where it's like he has the shadow clone jutsu there's three of him on the court at one time you know say what you want about it he is everywhere yeah the Um, game plan before the game nick was don't dribble in front of lb and that was about it so yeah you know he he's uh he's he's deceivingly quick he'll put on the old man game where he hobbles around and all of a sudden he's exactly you know, he's a hustler he's, man he's usain bolt yeah yeah so that was the end of that one Knicks took the victory 79 57 and for game three in the kennebec division we had the knicks in their second of two against the timberwolves they would take this victory 73 66 and a hard-fought victory uh, I loved what I saw from Jacob Farnham in this game, though. Another climb. Tristan, talk to us again about my Rookie of the Year candidate so far, Jacob Farnham's 24 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, 6 steals, and just 2 turnovers. I love how you're uh, calling it your Rookie of the Year because, like, <laughs> I got mine so wrong. But anyways, um, I mean, yeah, I don't really think there's much debate anymore. Uh, I think this was the game that we were waiting to see from him. Like, we saw gl- glimpses of this game for the previous couple of games um and he broke out the the efficiency a lot more with the scoring uh, i'm pretty sure he had a dunk as well which was he did. the first the first dunk of the year um a menace on defense as well it was um an all-around complete performance from him and i think it's something that he's honestly capable of producing every week and i think we've been waiting for this and we want to see if he can keep running with it um and if he can then yeah it's a lock for rookie of the year Definitely. I, I, I don't want to call it lock because there's some seriously talented guys like that Cam uh, Cam Diley guy in, in Sebago and, and a couple others. You know, I, I still want to keep pace and Washburn up in that narrative, um, he despite much better, he despite much the satire better. from week two. <laughs> yeah, he, he played much better. Also for the Timberwolves in the losing affair, Carlos Gonzalez, 16 points, nine rebounds, two turnovers. Uh, Ryan. Carlos Gonzalez, do you have much experience playing against him or around him in this league or in the adjacent communities? Uh, when I ran the Southern Maine Basketball League, he played in that league um, and just absolutely killed it. Uh, I think he was MVP two or three years. Wow. Uh, yeah, he. that's the first time I saw him play. And he actually lived with me for a little bit too, so I got to know Carlos, Carlos pretty well. Um, yeah, Carlos is a great guy and Obviously, he's bigger and stronger, and he's athletic, or he was athletic. I'm not so sure if he still has that athleticism that he did did have. But <laughs> he's a beast, man. But yeah, ab- absolute beast, and but more importantly, he's just a great guy. But he's super tough to nice guy. Tough matchup yeah. for anyone in this league, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mitch, you've played with him. Talk to me about Carlos, man. He's he's yeah, like Ryan said, just a, a hell of a guy. Uh. That's a really similar narrative, in my opinion, to uh, Mr. Middleton. Like, if Carlos would just go out there and just try to dominate just once, like, he can do it if he wants, right? Like, he's already dominant when he's just going through the motions, right? Um, But he's a really selfless player. When I played with him, we we had shooters all around him. And, man, like, he'd have a layup and still kick it out to the open guy. (laughs) You know, he's just that. He's that guy who wants to make the right play, even if sometimes he ignores the right play, which is him, right? A little too selfless sometimes, but... You got to love what he brings to the table. He's going to play hard. And uh, to Ryan's point, like everything about the guy, man, he's just, he's a, he's a good person, right? You, you can't root against him. Straight up. And and he's a guy who, who took some time away from the main basketball league, but still has won multiple championships in the last three or four, three to five years, I would say, right in this league. Um, won several awards, rebounding, blocks, uh, if, if my memory served me right. Um, just a great guy to have back in the league. I love to see him back in the main basketball league for sure. Um, but enough about the Timberwolves. They lost this one. The Knicks won it. Uh, ben Darling, again, another 20-point game, 23 points, five rebounds. Uh, LB Murphy, 10 points, six rebounds, five assists, three steals, one block. Uh, Ryan Gormley, 12 points, eight rebounds. Sean Smith, 16 points, five rebounds. 
Uh, really good trip for the Knicks. They would end up winning both of their games in Kennebec. Moving on here, this game was electric, guys. We're talking Nets, Pelicans, and arguably, some would say, some did say, championship preview, question mark. And I can't say no. I can't say that's an invalid, you know, prediction. Uh, other guys in this damn chat would say otherwise. But, uh, you know, <laughs> these are two real talented teams. Uh, and we saw the Pelicans put up 88 points, the most so far, and lose against the Nets, who put up 94 points in this one. Um New record in the main basketball league for points and a half, 37 points. Mr. Ryan Martin, what was it like to come in a, you know, basically unfamiliar gym and drop 37 points for your team in the first half, Ryan? Uh, I don't know, just making shots. I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I really shot any more than I usually do. I think I just, I think shots are just going in. Um, in the beginning, I got some easy open shots and then. Once I saw it go in, I think I started taking some more difficult shots, and uh, that's just how, how it went that first half. But I don't know. I got a lot of guys on my team that can score, so I think teams have to guard them too, and it's opening up more for, for me. Definitely. Uh, 37 points in the first half, six points in the second half. But uh, how about Tommy Wasage? 24 points, most of which came in the second half. What's it like to have a guy like him who, you know, you shoot the lights out in the first half, and then he comes in and he's like, no, I'm the guy. I'm going to shoot the lights out now. What's it like to have an option like that, finally, it seems, on a team for you? Yeah, I mean, I knew Tommy was good, but I guess I didn't know he was that good. Mm. He's he's like, he's a legit basketball player. He can really shoot, and he understands the game. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I we have two guys that can really, really score, and then we got a bunch of other guys who can – score too and who are great role players definitely really enjoying my team a lot of a lot of fun guys to play with and but tommy yeah tommy's he's one of the best definitely definitely a huge takeaway for the nets in this one was you guys played so damn well even even though you split the difference one win one loss spoiler alert even though you split the difference you did it without your two bigs you know against teams that had bigger players than you for the most part. Um, and I think CJ Lantain really, really, really stepped up and stepped out of his usual role. Some would say um, nine points, seven rebounds, four assists in this one. Um, all, obviously of the 94 Ryan and Tommy combined for 67 of those points. Um, but CJ put up nine and then Brandon Andrews off the bench chipped in of a couple threes, three for five, 60% from three. He's another guy. I mean, you and then Tommy, uh, you know, absolute magnets for defenders, for him to be on this team and be able to just hang out in the three-point line and just bank shots. Again, just another guy who can put the ball in, in the basket, right? Love to see that. Tristan, talk to me about this, this scoring outburst from Ryan Martin in week three. Man, I love the fact that his his answer to that was, I didn't shoot more than I normally did. I was just <laughs> making shots. And uh, I I couldn't agree with him more. It, I don't think he missed. That was the thing. Like, he may have only taken 10 shots. They were all threes and they all fell. I mean, it just happened, you know? Um, but it felt like there was a point in that game in the first half where you knew Ryan was bringing the ball up. He was pulling it in the face of whatever defender was on him. And there was not a question about if it was going in or not. Like, it was just... You were more surprised yep. that he missed when he finally did that. Then he kept going. It was, it was fun to watch from a neutral. Well, I know I'm a little biased towards the Pelicans, but from a mainly <laughs> neutral point of view, it was really, really fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, you, it was crazy. There were people on the other team who were sitting there in awe watching this performance. Like, we haven't seen something like this in the league in a long time. It was just great to see. And anyway, enough about Ryan. He's probably sitting there like, all right, guys, move move on, move on, next thing, because he's that type of, you know, humble dude. But great performance, ultimately, in this one. On the other side, though, we cannot sleep on this fucking dude, Eric Taylor, man. And there's my one F-bomb per episode. Uh, Eric Taylor, 28 points, 14 for 19 from the field, 25 rebounds. <laughs> 
three assists, zero turnovers, one steal, two blocks. Mitch, you've seen Eric Taylor play in this league a bunch. You know, he actually predates, you know, everyone in this chat in terms of main <laughs> basketball league. He won the first championship ever uh, alongside Ray. Talk to me about Eric Taylor, man. Well, it would have been real nice if uh, when I drafted him, if he had put up those kind of numbers or shown up for more than half the games. But, you know, <laughs> shout out to E.T. No, he's my guy. I like E.T. a lot, man. And again, one of those guys who's humble. Um, you watch him play for the first time, you kind of go, nah, he's not that good. There's no shot. Um, and then you watch him just make every shot and out-rebound guys way bigger than him. Um, you know, he's just, he is, he is, he would have fit in with like the Memphis Grizzlies mindset, right? Just that grit and grind. Like he's, uh, he's not going to be the guy who's going to go dice guys up, but he's literally getting half of his points every game off rebounds and putbacks. Um, 25 boards is insane, no matter who it's coming from. Yeah, uh, but ET e- makes it look easy. Like, you, you'll go ha- at halftime, how many boards does he have? Oh, 14. What? At halftime, right? And it's no, just, dude, it, it was like it was like eight rebounds in two minutes. Yeah, the first two minutes. The first back, two minutes, yeah. bro. Like, now, What? I am going to throw this out there. I've told ET this. So sometimes he'll tip the ball to himself off the backboard and then do it two more times, and then he gets those boards. <laughs> so I think he passed his stats a little bit on purpose. Um, you got to keep an eye on obviously. the field goal percentage. Right, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. But in this one, 14 for 19, 74%. That's respectable, man. And then 25 goddamn boards. Holy cow. We've It's been a long time since we've seen something like that, and it was probably from him, you know. Uh, Ricky White, 15 points, 15 rebounds. Kevin Beck finally showed up and really shot the ball well, 12 points. He he couldn't miss at one point, uh, four for six from deep. Uh, Matt Fournier sort of struggled in this one, three for 12 from the field, just nine points. He's been scoring the ball really well this season. Um, And then we saw uh, Chris Hersom sort of bust onto the scene. He chipped in a little bit for his team despite the losing affair. Uh, in this one. So the Nets would take it, like I said, by far the highest scoring game we've seen, uh, 94 to 88 Nets victory over the Pelicans. Uh, And then the last game that we have to talk about, this one, again, another absolute freaking banger. Uh, Suns defeating the Nets by three on a crazy heartbreaker at the very end of the game with Mike Akanji putting the ball in off a crazy inbound play. Um, Tristan, you had the call on that game-winning shot from Mike Akanji. What was that like? Man, first of all, I'm a little upset when you put that TikTok on there that you put the music over the call. Like, I like this song. I got it. But I was like, <laughs> I was proud of that call, man. It was fun. It was, it, it was a good moment where it was just – we had the timeout before, and I, I think it was due to the, the Nets mismanaged and shot the last shot too early, honestly. And the Suns got the ball and got the – take a timeout and advance it. And I was just sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, we're going to see something. Like, so I was ready. I was ready for it. And when he got the ball, I knew as soon as Mike touched it, it wasn't leaving his hands. And I was like, man, I was hoping for it, honestly. And we got to see it. And it was a, it was a crazy moment. We started the night off with a banger. We ended it with a banger. It was mm-hmm. just like the perfect cherry on top of the five games we got to witness, especially no, right after that high scoring matchup with the Pelicans, man, we were, we were spoiled last week in Kennebec. Oh, so totally spoiled. It was a great slate of games in week three. Um, I mean, it always is. Don't get me wrong. You know, I am blessed, absolutely blessed, you know, to be in this position I'm in. But um, this was a really special week of basketball for sure. Uh, For the Nets in this one, Ryan Martin, uh, 33 points, 12 for 19 from the field, one rebound, two assists, one steal. Also had a little bit of help, once again, from C.J. Lantane, 12 points, 8 rebounds. That was really it, though. Other than that, nobody scored more than 6. And this one, Wasaj only put up 6 points on 8 shots. Uh, So that was tough. The production just wasn't there down the stretch. For the Nets, outside, of course, of the top guy, Ryan Martin, to get that victory. Um, And then Mike Akanji, man, 32 points, 7 rebounds, 9 assists in that triple-double territory, 2 turnovers and 1 steal. Um, the main thing in this one, though, that I absolutely love to see, and Ryan, I'd like to hear your point of view on this as well, was freaking Josh Berard, man. 15 points, four for five from three, shot 80%, one assist, two turnovers, one steal, one block. And Ryan, before I let you just speak on Josh, like, 
I love how we always see Josh go against like the, the greatest shooters that we have in this league. And that's when he plays at his absolute best. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed, maybe I do because I watch every game, but whenever he matches up against like the best of the best in the league, that's when we see the real Berard come out. Like his competitiveness just gets to a new level when he goes against those top guys. Uh, Ryan, what was it like to compete against Josh? And what's also it like to sort of work alongside him and myself behind the scenes, putting this amazing uh, community, uh, you know, of the main basketball league on? Yeah, well, just growing up, um, I used to watch Josh play. So I remember <laughs> watching, I remember watching Josh um, just being another small guard who could score. Um, just like Nick P a lot too. I mean, those are two guys I used to look up to growing up. And so, yeah, it's yeah, cool. I played against him in the Augusta Y League, I think when I was in college. Um, so I got, that's the first time I got to play against him. And, and yeah, playing against him now, I mean, he's a guy who can go, go by defenders. He's a smart basketball player too. He makes the right read. He's not out there just trying to score points. He just makes the right basketball play very consistently. And um, when you can't leave him open, that, that was our mistake. We left him open a few times. Um, but credit to Mike Akonji, too. I thought he made some good passes to find Josh. Mm -hmm. But I was also talking to Josh during that game, too. Like I told him, it was like watching him play at CM again. He, mm -hmm. he, had, a, he had a motor to him that game. He was, he was crossing our guys up. He was getting to the yeah, basket. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it was a little bit of a throwback game for Josh. Um, just another great guy in this league, though. And obviously, I, just, I love being able to work with him and, and, and play against him. Definitely. And he'd say some shit like, oh, every dog has their day. But no, man, he he really had a great game. And it was it was awesome to see you guys competing, just knowing the story behind it. And and even just now, dude, you know, just off off the rip right now, hearing you say that you used to watch him as a kid. Um, that's so cool to me. And now having the opportunity to play against him in this league and, and you know, all this like that's just that's so cool to me that that, uh, that put a smile on my face. Um, but yeah, in this one, guys, final game of week three, Suns 71 in that uh, in that last second game winner, Nets 68. Suns finally getting, uh, you know, something in the win column. So starting off with the player highlights here, uh, Deontay, I'm going to start with you. I feel like you have a really good opinion, somebody who you want to talk about and highlight. Uh, so for me, I I chose Matt Glendon of the Bulls. Uh, I see him as a Draymond kind of player. Uh, he does the if you go look at his stats or whatever, like they don't really pop out too much to you, but he's loud, enthusiastic, vocal, like that. Th those are the type of things that you need. And to me, he kind of reminds me of a younger me, like that raw, untamed talent. Like he may have found his niche. He made that that's just the type of player that he is. But to me, I feel like if he tried to develop a little more, you would see a different side of him and, and he could really blossom. He's a carryover from Kennebec, man. We've seen him win a championship in this league uh, on a team a couple of seasons ago. You know, uh, real talented guy, high motor, loud, proud. Uh, you know, he'll call out every screen for you as a teammate, whether he's on the floor next to you or on the bench, you know, 50 feet away. Like he's that right. type of guy, you know, absolute great teammate, in my opinion. Um, go getter too. He'll he'll take on the toughest matchup of last season. He uh, was with Josh Berard on the Celtics and went and guarded Ryan Martin, you know, so he's that type of guy. He won't shy away from it. Um, and he's a very respectable guy. Tristan, you know, Matt pretty well, right? You've seen him over yeah, I'm a actually, bit. Yeah, I'm actually kind of bummed because that's what I was going to say for my player highlight. So I'm going to have to do some thinking here. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, so go to other people before you come to me. Okay, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, I love I love Glidden. He's awesome. And I think um, Deontay was spot on with what he said, that if he could just refine it a bit more, um, we could see a lot more from him. But it's all heart. It's all determination. And it's all hustle with Glidden, which you – with Glidden, sorry, which you need a guy like that on your team especially on the defensive end and he can shoot man we've seen him hit game winners before too and um he's, he's an all-around great dude to have on your team definitely definitely uh ryan give me give me your player highlight uh i'm gonna go with cj langtang oh okay uh my te so not only is he my teammate but i was his eighth grade pe teacher 
at, at acting school. And then I was his high school basketball coach at Sanford. Um, always loved coaching CJ and teaching him. And it's pretty cool to be on the play with him now. CJ's just a guy who always, in high school, he'd do whatever was asked from the coach. And he kind of has carried that over into men's league too, where he really just does whatever is best for the team. He, I mean, he was, he's five foot 10 maybe. And he was guarding Ricky White and Eric Taylor yeah, man. in our game. I mean, and I don't know how many rebounds he had, but it seemed like he was doing a very good job competing on the boards. And he's just in shape. He works hard. He can really guard. I mean, show they can guard almost every position. And when he's open, he can shoot pretty well too. So definitely want to highlight the guy I coached and the guy that I now get to play with, CJ. And I will highlight one more if you want me to, someone from a different team, or is it just one? as much as you would like please i'll go one more too because uh, my other guy is ben darling i know we talked mm-hmm. about him a little bit yeah sound off um i'd say ben i can't say he's underrated because i know everyone's talked highly about him before but maybe for me um i'm realizing now how good i think ben is he is super competitive he has maybe the highest motor out of anyone that plays in this league mm-hmm. um He's a good, good uh, on-ball pressure defender. He's a guy who can. I mean, he he has some like unorthodox finishes around the rim, but he's consistent at finishing around the rim. And he's also a good outside shooter. And I think there's a reason why I believe the Knicks are three and zero with him and zero and zero and one without him. Yep, they are. Uh, and I'm sure. I think too. Every team Ben's been on, I believe, has had a winning season or a pretty good team. Yep. I just think Ben Ben does a lot um, offensively and defensively, and he's someone that I think I've noticed more of this season. Yeah, tremendous, tremendous guy and tremendous player. Um, well said, both of those guys, valid, valid, valid selections for the player highlight. Uh, transition over to Mitch. Who do you want to highlight as your player? Yeah, probably a little biased, but I'm going to go with John Cleggs. Um I think that, again, if I don't have – a terrible start to the season if we don't lose a four-point game to uh with his team I, and i think if we're two and one or three and oh people are talking about john <laughs> he struggled a little, little bit last season but he came out firing first game second game even even if it was quiet from a scoring standpoint like he was still playing defense getting boards making great assists like the guy is just such a such a great guy but on top of that like he is the epitome of like I'm, i'll do whatever it takes for us to win um and you know, I've had a conversation with him, and I pretty much said, "Dude, you gotta you gotta let that thing fly." Like he he is mm-hmm. he is in shape. He looks like he just wants it, and uh, I think this is gonna be it's going to continue to be a bit of a comeback season for him. So I'm just gonna put put people on notice if if we can get our act together when it comes to defense and moving the ball a little bit. Um, John Cleggs might be leading the way, so um, I'm excited to see what he has in store the rest of the season. Definitely. He's a guy, again, we, we touched on it earlier. Week one came out, guns blazing, uh, toned it down a bit in week two. I think we've all seen the potential he has shooting the ball, but in other areas, really, um, you know, bringing his game uh, up a notch. I think he's very capable of it. So uh, I'd love to see John uh, lead the Kings to a couple wins here coming up. That would be fantastic. Uh, Tristan, what do you think? I'm going to go with Brad. Brad Smith is my my highlight, my player to highlight, and more for than just the obvious reasons. Obviously, we know he can shoot. Um, he's got good footwork around the basket. He's a good teammate, selfless player. But I think mm-hmm. one of the things that goes under the radar about Brad is his grit and his toughness. I think he's one of the only bigs in this league that will body to body Ricky the entire game, not take a possession off, not back down and try and win offense, defense. He's I'm firmly say that he's one of the only people that will go every possession with big bodies like Ricky and he doesn't back down from the challenge. And I think that's huge. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's a good one for sure. Um, My player highlight. It's really tough. Honestly, I I made a decision before this to not premeditate. I was just going to go through this episode and just whatever came to me in the moment I was going to go with. So um, the one I have been, you know, sitting on, he's not had a crazy season. He's had a ton of help and he's off a loss now against the Nets, but I'm going with Ricky White, man. Player highlight Ricky White. He's back as a captain. God, he's playing well. But the thing that I'd love to see, I think our league is at its best when, you know, 
people are enjoying the experience and want to be there and even in like a loss are you know going out there competing and having a good time and ricky man has have not only is he having a good season he's leading the way for his team but he's just having a good time out there and anyone who knows ricky white he's an absolute legend in this league and in this community and when he's having a good time everyone's having a good time and i think it's just been a really awesome thing to see over in kennebec so far this season absolutely So starting us off with the hot takes, Tristan, I'm going to have you lead the way. All right. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, I think that this is the first year Sebago breaks through and wins the chip. I oh, think you stole mine. <laughs> I think Sebago wins. I think no. there's a there's a pretty tough team in the East in the Pelicans. Um, we're not East Kennebec with the Pelicans, but I think we are seeing depth now with um, Sebago. Sorry, it's not just whatever team Ryan Martin's on anymore. I mean, obviously that mm -hmm. team is still up there and they're one of the three, in my opinion, that I think could take it. I think it's them, the Pistons, and that's very, very close between those two. And I don't know who I have, uh, you know, leading the way there. And then the Knicks aren't far off. What I, From what I saw with uh, Ben Darling and the Knicks, um, especially game one, no, sorry, Mitch, um, they made me believers, and I was like, these guys can hoop. So I think those three teams are going to make it tough. Tristan, no, no apologies either, man. I'm telling you, I'm serious when I say this. Like, uh, the Sebago division is, is in the past still had some growing pains, and, like, I was a believer after our game. Like, the, those yeah. Knicks, the way yeah, they played, man. I was like, man, man, we've actually got, like, not – again, we've got some good teams in the past, but, like, to your point, we've got three solid teams in that division now that could all make a play for it. That's good for us. It's gonna be fun yeah yeah i mean tristan like i like i said in my emotional reaction man you stole <laughs> mine because holy cow guys who are who's gonna beat any of the pistons the nets or the knicks like holy cow there's some weapons on all those teams and like i'm looking at kennebec and we look at the nuggets currently sitting at four and oh you know pretty pretty well off at the top there but guys, if if you shut down DeRoseby, the Nuggets are toast, right? I mean, if the Pelicans, they just got beat by the Nets, and the Nets are second place in Sebago. Like, what is going on? Sebago is going to have the trophy this season, and gosh, I hope it would be poetry, right? I know, Ryan, what would that mean for the community? What would it mean to you bringing this, just all this together for that to even happen, come to fruition? Ah, we should have won a couple already. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, yep. No, I don't. I do agree, though. I mean, the Sebago division obviously is. I believe it's better in the spring. I think it was good in the spring last year, and it's more talented in the spring session again this year. Um, but yeah, I think in the past, Kennebec has won more of the crossover games, and I'm obviously biased towards the Sebago side because that's the side I play in, and I know more of the guys in that division. So I'm I'm kind of rooting for. For our teams, I want us to to be better than the Kennebec teams. Mm -hmm. So I think now, I think this season, it does seem um, like this season, it's pretty even with both the leagues. It is. To touch on your point about the crossover games for the stat freaks that are out there, um, there was only one team in each side that defended home court. So it was even completely on which side won and which side didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you'd find a lot of uh consistencies over a couple seasons like it's always really even the talent maybe not so much but usually in the beginning it, it kind of pans out a little bit even not so much in the very beginning i think there was more of a disparity but nowadays holy cow sebago's here and they're here to stay i think um mitch hot takes well i'm just gonna throw it out there you know uh Kings Pistons championship matchup. What do you say? What do you think? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like that. I like I'm that. I, mean, I, I think it could happen, but that's, that's not my hot take. Uh, I mean, I'd love a rematch with Ryan too. I'm not saying I wouldn't. So, um, but uh, oh, that's awesome. No, my my hot take is this, and it's it's kind of building off of the key player that Tristan mentioned. Uh, talked about him a little bit earlier, but um, the Clippers, I don't think will have any success the rest of the season, right? They may win a couple more games unless they continue to utilize Brad Smith the way they did last game. 
that if they if if they go two, three, four, five possessions at a time where he doesn't touch the ball, uh, they will not find success. They need to run their offense through him. They need to run their game plan through him. They've got good players on their team, not taking any shots at anybody. But but Brad is through and through the most well-rounded player on that team. He averaged 20 in the Auburn League. He's averaging well over 20 in Augusta League. He's that guy who can score the ball if he gets touches. But the first two games of the season, he got like six or seven shots that were in rhythm, that were in his space. If they continue to utilize him, I think they could start to make some noise. Um, but I, I think they'll struggle otherwise. Yeah, the Clippers is a tough one, Mitch, because you understand the difficulty of a 10-man roster in this league. No, no. No, no. Right. And so, I mean, Ryan would even say, right? Like, Ryan, an eight-man roster even sometimes, right? I mean, let alone 10. And and so it's really, really tough to balance that rotation, I think. Um, Brad Smith, one of those guys we've seen climb, I think, every season. Mitch, you always sing his praises. Uh, I, I really like him on this Clippers team, but he has to be the guy. I think you're spot on. He definitely it has to go through him in more ways than one. And like you said, just so uber talented. Um, that's a great take for sure. Deontay, with your hot take. Uh, I'm going to say that the Suns are going to make a crazy season turnaround and end up toward the top of the top of the Kennebec division. Uh, after the win against Ryan, I feel like they're going to ride that coattail. Josh is going to keep shooting the ball that he the way that he did. And I feel like playing along, uh, Mike Dion Cheers Jr. is gonna emerge. He's gonna gain a little, a lot more confidence. We're gonna see a, a a better player. That's a great kid right there. Adding him was so crucial for that team in this win that they just got. Like I asked Mike about it after the game, and he was singing the praises of young Dion. I mean, we're looking at the stat sheet. You don't see anything crazy popping out at you, but just the presence, the, the athleticism, and again, that quickness, the, the ability to defend. Not a guy who's like a shot creator, not really a shot maker even, but you know he can get to the rim if he needs to, and most importantly, he can defend, and he can defend the perimeter, and that helped them a ton in this game. It was really crucial for them to get the win that they got. Again, great take, Deontay. I think you're spot on. That, that win that they got, nail-biter win against the Nets at the end of week three, I think they're going to ride that momentum into the sunset. No pun intended. I wish I had something good, but I think after watching Eric Taylor get 80 rebounds against us, <laughs> I'm going to say Eric Taylor finishes the season with 200-plus rebounds. Whoa. Whoa. That's a ton. That's a He's ton. on pace for it, though. That's a ton. Yeah. I mean, isn't that like twelve to thirteen a game? No, it's got. What do we play? Eleven. It's games? like it's like twenty. Oh, twenty if we play, twenty, 20 if we, game. Twenty if we play ten games, but we play eleven, right? So, well, little like nine. So 18, like eighteen, nineteen. 18. He's oh. averaging nineteen right now. He's gonna have to keep that. Oh up. yeah, he's that's, definitely on pace. I mean, yeah. whew, that's a hell of a prediction. If the Pelicans keep shooting the way they've been shooting, he'll get it because every time they miss a three, it ends up with two points anyways because Taylor's yeah. there. Yeah, he's just cookie monster, <laughs> right? Like he just vacuums Once it all up. It's everything. crazy. But yeah, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Again, Commissioner Nickery Hunter, broadcast host Tristan Richards coming at you with this amazing panel of guests. I uh, appreciate your gut, you guys and your time. You all add so much to this community. Ryan, back-to-back -back MVP. Mitch, multiple-time uh, champion and longtime captain. Deontay, one of the young, uh, most exciting talents we have in our league. Future MVP, future champion in this league. Um, you know, I appreciate all of you guys. But that's the end of the program here tonight. We appreciate all our sponsors. We'll see you guys on Sunday. We'll see you guys on Monday. And until then, just one word for you. Peace. All right, guys.